What's going on guys? It's Matt Jacobs here back with another video. Today I want to talk about this camera right here. This is the Fujifilm X-T10. It has the Viltrox 56mm. Focuses on it perfectly. I, I absolutely love this camera. I want to talk a little bit about the accessories I have for it here as well because uh, like this eyepiece and this grip and I like a wrist strap on all my cameras but they all really make this uh, the complete package in my opinion. The first reason I really like this camera is just the form factor. Um, I actually, oh, I don't know where my, there's a little wrench that went in the bottom of this. It must have fell out in my camera bag somewhere, but um, to take off this grip. It's, uh, I think it's too small on the hand without this. I, I love this wooden grip. I have a wooden grip for my X-Pro1 as well. And uh, it actually, it's an absolute game changer, I have to say. This wooden grip really makes it bearable. I can even, I think the heaviest lens that I can comfortably put on this camera is the Viltrox 56 millimeter, which I'm using to film this right now. It's approximately the size of the Fujifilm 18 to 55 kit lens. Um, that's about as big as I'd like to go on here. I think the, um, the 35 mil 1.5, Four fits on this camera really really nicely it's like just big enough without being too big but I personally just like to keep the 27 mil pancake on it just because it's the absolute most compact nicest small camera that you can get I originally had a, an XM1 I got and I thought that would be the ultimate package for having the pancake lens on and having a compact camera but after getting the X-T10, because I also wanted to try out the X-Trans 2 sensor, uh, I found that I just, I love this a lot more, and it's about approximately the size of the Fuji X-M1, so I think this is the perfect small form factor kind of camera, though. So I plan to carry this little package around with me around college campus uh, when the new semester starts here next week, um, and I'm really excited to see what I get with it. I I absolutely love the images that come out of this camera. It's it's the sensor, I think, the X-Trans 2. A lot of people say that's the best X-Trans sensor there is. Um, I also really like the X-Trans 1 and my X-Pro 1. I just absolutely, I want to take a second and just say thank you Fujifilm for making all of your cameras have amazing image quality and not intentionally crippling it like a lot of uh, camera companies. I hope that's not where they're heading. It's starting to get to the point where Fuji has so many different lines of cameras that it, it's starting to seem like that's what might happen. And I really hope they don't go down that road because that's a huge reason why I and a lot of people love Fuji is you can get this, I mean, at the time, the X, this was the, the generation which with the X-T1 um, and then the X-T10 and I think, the X Pro one maybe was before that, but um, this was the the second generation with the new X Trans two sensors, and they, I mean, this has just as good of image quality as the XT one at the time. So I don't need to to buy an XT one. I, I actually got this for, um, I mean, without these accessories on it, I got it on eBay for three hundred dollars, and that includes taxes and shipping. So I though I paid three hundred dollars in total to get this camera. And uh, I haven't regretted it one bit. Um, I do have, because I have four Fujifilm cameras, I have two X-T3s, which are for my like commercial, professional stuff. And uh, the X-Pro1 I got, and it was just too fun not to use for uh, my personal photography for a while. But then I just had a family event just yesterday, and I picked up the X-T10, and I was just, I remembered why why I was so happy with this camera when I first got it. I think it's a match made in heaven. This this camera, the X-Trans 2 sensor, paired with 35mm 1.4, it's just so magical. The image quality, the colors, just, it's just it's so right. <laughs> so um, if you want a $300 camera, that is probably the best value you're ever going to get. And you could probably find a 27mm version 1 lens since the version 2 is out. It probably went down in price. It's basically the same lens that without... I mean, this just doesn't have an aperture ring and weather sealing, but uh, the camera doesn't have weather sealing, so it doesn't matter in the first place. This is a great package. If you're thinking about getting into the Fuji system, this is a fantastic way to start. The only thing is, I think this is pretty limited on video features, unfortunately. I should actually uh, do a comparison next to my X-T3 just because, because I... I'm going to be shooting some interviews at, at some point, and uh, I need a third camera. I have two X-T3, so it's identical image quality. I need at least one camera that is close, and I would like it to be a Fujifilm just for the colors. This camera, especially with the small lenses, I'm talking about the F2 Primes, 23mm F2 is what I have. I don't have the 35 F2, or this pancake, or I did sell off my 18 uh, F2, but that was a great, that was actually 
like the also a perfect size on this. There's a lot of, I just, I guess I just love the Fuji lenses on this camera. There's just something that's so right about it. And I have to admit that even though I like the form factor of the X-T3, I almost like the, the X-T10 form factor even more. I guess you could just say the X-T1 number and the X-T2 number line because the X-T1, 2, 3, and 4, and the X-T10, 20, and 30 are, are all basically the same shell of a camera with different, um, organs. <laughs> but yeah, I actually, whenever I was looking up this camera, I wanted just to get one in the X-T2 number line. It didn't matter to me if it was an X-T20. I was actually looking at an X-T20 because Omar Gonzalez, he vouches so hard for that camera. But um, the X-T10 was just such a great deal. $300, I mean, it, was, it felt like a steal. I just, I love buying used Fuji gear. It just, it works out so well and you can usually find a fantastic price. And then it just, it feels that much better whenever you get like a keeper image that you're like, this is eventually gonna go in my portfolio someday. Um, and you get it on a $300 camera and you're just, it's just like, it feels amazing because, because then at that point, you know it's not just your gear you're relying on, it's, it's you as a photographer and it's just, it's a tool. And uh, I happen to like these really, really old tools, like 10 year old Fuji cameras. They're, they're the best. I don't know what it is about like 2012, but that's right about where image quality met its peak of like realistic needs. Like we, like 2012, like think about it. That's whenever like the Fuji X system like really started, like 35, 1.4 was a re released around that time. The X Pro one, the XT one, all these amazing Fuji cameras that people like are going after today, I mean, partially because of the reduced price because they're older, but also because of the sensors that they have in them and just, I don't know, the old ones just feel really good in the hand. I have to say, like, even the X-T3, it's not like the X-T4, the absolute newest one, but it doesn't have as much magic as, like, these, the X-Pro1 has the most magic, but this definitely has some magic too, and I just, I don't know, I, I really like it. I also like the little, the flash. I don't probably use it that often, but I'm sure there's been like a time or two. I mean, it can't hurt to have like a little built-in flash. I mean, that's great. It's so cute. And it's hidden so well, too. Like you would, wouldn't even be able to, I like was so surprised the first time I saw someone pop that flash up. It's really well hidden. Um, I do wish that the, the dials on top, I wish that you could lock them in place. That is a huge thing. Um, oh yeah, I do wanna, there's one glaring thing. Um, to be aware of with the X-T10 and like just the older Fujifilm cameras in general. I feel like there wasn't as great of a quality control in Fujifilm at that point. The X-T10, and I've looked this up before because my, my playback button for, for like reviewing my pictures broke after I bought this online and it just it was like so sad. It, I mean, it really didn't bother me that much. I just got used to whenever I was using this not chimping back at my images immediately, but the play button broke and it like twisted and it, this is actually a common problem I found whenever I looked up the X-T10 online. There was full forums dedicated to this specific button breaking on people's cameras and also the thumb grip falling off. And obviously this is way out of warranty and I'm like at least the second owner of this camera, if not probably the third. Um, so <laughs> these problems happen with these older cameras and luckily I was actually able to take a knife <laughs> and like screw the, the the playback button back and like hold it in, with a piece of tape so it didn't like twist back out of place and stop working um, so it actually it does like the, it's not like the the button completely stopped working it was just like it twisted I don't know it's it's a common problem if you look up with the XC10 but uh, that's just something to think about. These older Fuji cameras, they are amazing and they have great image quality, but the, the build quality, the physical build quality is is lacking a little bit. Just before we end it off here, I want to talk a little bit about the accessories I got for this camera because I really like to deck out my, my cameras with uh, at least a grip and like a, maybe a thumb grip as well. Um, but yeah, I already talked about the wood grip. This wood grip I really love. And I think it would also fit the X-T20 and maybe even the X-T30 as well. I don't think they changed the, the way the bodies are enough for it to uh, completely not work with those cameras. Uh, I also got this eye socket piece because these X-T2 number cameras don't have a rubber thing around the eyepiece. So this actually goes into the hot shoe and uh, 
it's pretty big so it is kind of inconvenient because then you want to flip the screen out and look down and it kind of blocks the screen you can see um, it blocks like half the screen when you're looking down so you have to like flip it back and then whenever you want to put it back up to your eye you have to flip it back out so it, it's a little bit annoying but it's better than not having anything there in my opinion and um, yeah then the only other thing is this wrist strap so I, I like wrist straps on pretty much all my cameras and uh, I went with a, a red wish wrist strap because it's a little bit color coordinated with the with a shutter button I put on here I also like doing shutter buttons and all my Fuji cameras that can take them um, I don't think I have any that can't take a shutter button because I sold my XM1 so that's pretty much all I have to say about this camera. I obviously have showed you a lot of image samples I've taken with it. The colors are just beautiful. Um, I think it has a little bit of better highlight recovery than the X-Trans 1 sensor, just um, from comparing shooting with my X-Pro 1. Um, so I think this recovers your highlights better. Fuji is one of those cameras where it doesn't recover shadows so well, but it recovers highlights better, so it's good to maybe overexpose by half a stop, versus I think Sony and a couple other camera manufacturers, it's better to underexpose and bring back the shadows rather than the highlights. I think it's just like a pick your poison kind of thing with different camera manufacturers, but uh, just just try that. Um, maybe overexpose your, your pictures by half a stop and recover the highlights and a lot of times you'll find, or at least I find, that I like the exposure on those pictures better. There's something uh, like, there's some sort of magic and I think it actually looks filmic with the Fujifilm X-Trans sensor. Something about having the highlights a little bit overexposed and then like bringing them back. It just gives this look and this awesome pop to your images. So try that out. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. That's just uh, something that I like to do with my camera. I guess I didn't go way into like the specs. I just kind of said about how I like it feeling. I mean, I'm sure if you watch someone else's video on this, you know it has like a flippy articulating screen and you know what the buttons do and stuff. I I'm not really that interested in talking about what the buttons do. It's really customizable. That's a great thing. You can customize like each thing on the, the D-pad and yeah, you can do some you can make it however you want it to be. It's really great. I love shooting all my cameras in manual, so it's a great camera for that. And it also has a really simple and easy um, switch just to go to full automatic. Say if you wanted to hand this to a family member who had no clue what they're doing with cameras and they don't know what a, an aperture is. So yeah, I absolutely love this camera and its price and especially the images that it makes. I'm just... Uh, I'm still like, I just can't believe it sometimes. Just how how these small Fujifilm cameras, it's just like at least like 10 times better than anything your phone could do. And phone cameras are really great nowadays, but it's like these 10 year old Fuji cameras just blow everything out of the water, especially for the price point. It's just, it's mind blowing. Um, so yeah, huge Fuji fan right here. I don't know if you could tell. I absolutely, I think that's my goal here now that I started doing this camera content on this channel. I'm just gonna keep making videos until Fuji sends me a camera to try out or a lens or something. I just, uh, or a shirt even. I just wanna, yeah, I, I just really like, really like Fuji stuff, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm also gonna be honest at the same time. I like Fuji because it gives me like this awesome experience. If I, I gotta say, if there was another camera manufacturer that did it better, then I would be with them. But Fujifilm is just what does it for me. Um, but I am gonna point out like there's obvious quality control issues. And if I don't like something about it, it's not, I'm not just gonna be like, oh, Fuji's great. They no, can never do any wrong. Like, like this is a huge problem that my picture view button broken, like everybody's is breaking but yeah that's my thoughts on the xt10 let me know if you want to uh i think a huge video i want to use it some more I, w I always like to use my stuff for at least a couple months before i make a whole video on it so i i know i actually experienced using it um but i think pretty soon in the next few months i want to do the 35 one four because that lens is just there's it's magic i can't i don't know what it is i don't know what Fuji does, they have some sort of magic powder they sprinkle into every camera and lens they make. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. I wanna hear your thoughts. Do you like the audio on this video? I've, I've tried some different audio uh, on each of the past videos. So the Viltrox 56, I use my Blue Yeti Pro, and I think that's the highest quality sound, but this is more directional so it could isolate so there's not as much background noise. I also didn't leave my fridge running this time. And um, I think I used the lav mic in the video before that, which I think is the lowest quality, but the easiest. So 
it's like it's either really hard to set up but sounds great or it's really easy to set up and sounds okay uh, so anyway i don't think you really care about that as long as you can hear what i'm saying i put background music on anyway so uh yeah anyway <laughs> I'll, I'll see you in the next one bye